Hi, so my name is Chris and you're watching a video about marijuana use during pregnancy. The video is going to be broken down into who uses marijuana and then I'm going to be following that up by marijuana's effects on mom and baby during pregnancy and then I'm going to finish it off talking about how it affects baby after pregnancy. So marijuana is used by roughly 7% of patients during pregnancy. The most common reasons they use marijuana are for nausea, vomiting, and chronic pain. When looking at the research comparing marijuana and pregnancy, I had to separate out all the studies that were looking at combined polysubstance so that patients were using marijuana and cigarettes. So all this data is going to be really focusing at only using marijuana during pregnancy. So for patients using marijuana during pregnancy, there is an increased likelihood that they can have low blood or be anemic. There has not been shown good evidence that there is an increase in high blood pressure, but there has been shown good evidence that there is increased likelihood that the baby will have to go to neonatal ICU and that the baby will also have a low birth weight. So now transitioning from mom and going toward baby, so it has been proven that marijuana does cross the placenta and roughly 10% of whatever is in mom's blood will be in baby's blood in regards to like the amount. And secondly, it's been shown that marijuana negatively interacts with the placenta such that it decreases blood flow. So that's kind of the thought for why babies will be de developing low birth weight. And so now how does marijuana affect baby while baby's developing in utero? <clears throat> so this is kind of broken up and there's a lot of different studies about this, but one of the studies I'll say that there was no increased risk of congenital malformations. So there was nothing associated with marijuana. However, there was a two and a half increased risk um, for anencephaly, which means like really poor development of like head, um, which was found in another paper. <clears throat> Another two papers looked at kind of baby after delivery. So kind of comparison about how baby's growing and then how baby looks after delivery. And so, as I said earlier, there was low birth weight. That's correct. When you also look at it as well, there was lower APGARs. This is how active the baby is after the baby's immediately born. <clears throat> and there was also like an increased risk for more stillbirth. In general, if you are smoking greater than two times a week, that's considered high use. And patients who have also high use have been shown to have increased risk for preterm delivery. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was baby after delivery and how they look after when they get discharged. And there was no increased death prior to baby being discharged and moms who smoke marijuana. There was no increase in intraventricular hemorrhage in these patients. There was no increased risk for neck, which is uh, neonatal enterocolitis. So there was no increased risk for that. There was no increased risk for bronchopulmonary dysplasia, and there was no increase for cerebral palsy. So those are the extremes. These are like pretty big um, kind of findings if you do notice them in your neonates. So there was no increased risk in any of those. The final subject will be looking at breastfeeding and how marijuana in pregnancy can affect babies long-term. So for breastfeeding. So THC in marijuana is small and it loves fat. It's lipophilic. Those two qualities make it a really good thing to get into breast milk. So anything that's small, anything that loves fat, can get really easily into breast milk. And that's the case with THC. So yes, THC is found in breast milk. It's found in fatty portions. So that's more of the hind milk, the end milk for, instead of the fore milk. And there has been shown evidence that THC can be transferred from breast milk to baby. And then when they looked at the baby's fecal material, they were able to see THC breakdown products. So baby got THC and baby broke down THC. So going beyond that, how does this potentially affect baby? So marijuana use does increase the risk for spontaneous infant death syndrome, SIDS, but in a cognitive or behavioral setting, there has been a possible increased risk of motor development delay. So being able to use arms and legs and fingers this was a 1990 paper. There hopefully are more papers coming out about this to better understand the effects. 
Another paper as well kind of looked at the behavioral, like how baby interacts with other babies and how they are like developing intellectually. And they found no decreased, re decreased comparison between patients who were using marijuana and they weren't. So from the research, it says that the probably, probably po or possibly there is a delay in motor function development if you're using marijuana while you're breastfeeding. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that this helped bring a little bit more light to what the research shows about marijuana use during pregnancy. This was all stated from different research articles. None of this is testimonial. But if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the section below and I'll be linking all the papers if you wanted to look at them yourself and come to your own conclusion. So thanks and I hope that helped. A very tiny thing and really you don't have to watch this if you don't want, but if you just heard THC and babies and didn't really know the connection and you want to understand the pathway, then this next few minutes we'll just be talking about that if you really wanted to understand it and why it there should be a lot of caution toward using marijuana during pregnancy. So THC is found in marijuana and it interacts on the endocannabinoid system. This is called the ECS and it is found to be developed in fetuses at five weeks of gestation, so really early on. And the way THC works and the reason why you have an increased risk if you're smoking marijuana during first trimester for anencephaly, two and a half times increase, is because um, an anencephaly is like underdeveloped brain, underdeveloped, underdeveloped skull. And why does it affect that specifically if it's THC? So THC works on the endocannabinoid system, and I'll hopefully put up a picture right now, and it specifically works on CB1. This is a neuronal lineage uh, it's like specifier, okay? And that then interacts and causes an increased amount of proteases. Proteases are little proteins that break down other proteins. And specifically, it breaks down SCG10, super cervical ganglion 10. And because it breaks down SCG10, there is an incorrect balance in the brain. And this is during the development phase. And it's a very Goldilocks approach. You can't have too much, you can't have too little, as we just write. And with the amount of SCG, SCD10, or SCG10, if you have too little, you have no growth um, of certain neurons in the brain. And if you have too much SCG10, then you have sporadic growth and there's a crazy amount of growth. And that growth is important because you have layers in your brain. You may have heard of a cortex or something, but you have cortical layers in your brain and the layering effect is important. And that layering effect is disrupted through the use of THC, especially during the first trimester. So the, the last part is how it affects the actual neurons, if you really want to understand, is that it affects the postsynaptic region. So that is the side that receives signal from other neurons. Like if you're doing like a handshake, like if you're like squeezing each other like all around the ring, the person squeezing first is the presynaptic, because the synapse is between, and the receiving squeeze, the hand that receives squeeze, is the postsynaptic. So it affects the postsynaptic, so the receiving area where neurons get signals, it affects that region, and it is a retrograde effect, so it really kind of limits the ability for neurotransmitter um, release. So there's presynaptic and postsynaptic, and it works on the postsynaptic side, which is the handshake that's receiving the squeeze. And it affects there, and that's where you're receiving signal. 
and then it actually goes retrograde and it affects this side's ability to release neurotransmitter. So in general, it has a very poor outlook on the ability for you to develop certain areas of the brain when you're first developing it when you're a baby.